Would you like your RetroArch playlist to show box art? Cool! Do you want your games to go from looking like this? Boring! To this? Or even this? If so, stick around and I'll show you how. Let's start with adding box art. In the RetroArch main menu, press F5 to get to the desktop interface. Select your playlist. And if you need help creating a playlist, make sure you check out our RetroArch tutorial on a basic setup. Right click, go down to download all thumbnails and select this playlist. And it'll start to grab the box art. Back in RetroArch's main menu, I can now see the box art in my playlist. Unfortunately, it's not uncommon for RetroArch to miss some of your box art. There's a couple ways we can fix that. First, make sure your games are named correctly. RetroArch uses a naming convention referred to as No Intro. We can visit this page on archive.org to see how our game should be labeled. The link is in the description. In this example, I'll open the Nintendo Entertainment System page. And then either scrolling through the games list or using the search option, I'll find the game Dr. Mario. I'm going to copy the text of the one that's closest to the version I'm using, which is the US version. Don't highlight the .zip part, just the file name. Back in the RetroArch desktop menu, I right click the Dr. Mario game, go down to edit, and add in the text that I copied. Close and reopen RetroArch, and then download thumbnails for that playlist again. And we now have the box art. Sometimes, no matter how hard you try, a box art will not update. So in that case, we have to use what we might call a brute force method. To do that, we go to a website called thegamesdb.net and we'll search for the name of the game that we need box art for. We click on the game when we find it, click on the box art, and then save as. RetroArch requires a PNG file, so we'll need to convert the JPEG. We can do it through this online converter. The link is in the description. Once it's converted, we download it. Now with the RetroArch desktop menu open, we just drag our PNG, drop it over here in this box art section, and now we have our missing box art. Now let's talk about overlays. What is an overlay? Well, according to the RetroArch website, it's like a clear piece of glass that we can lay over our game screen to then add things of visual interest to. Let's see how to configure it and then look at some examples. It's always a good idea to first update the overlays within the RetroArch menu. You can do that from the main menu by going to Online Updater and then Update Overlays. I like to configure the overlays with a game already running so I can see what they look like. So with a game running, we go to the RetroArch menu and we scroll down in the Quick menu to On-Screen Overlay. Make sure that these first two items are turned on. Display Overlay and Show Overlay Behind Menu. This third option, Hide Overlay in Menu, that's up to you as to whether or not you want to turn that on. Lastly, I like to set the overlay opacity to 100. That way there's no transparency to the overlay. Now we can select an overlay preset. I'm going to go into this Borders folder and then choose TV Integer as an example. And let's see what that looks like. It's basically an old school TV around my image, which is cool, but you'll notice it doesn't quite look right. And that's because a number of overlays are designed for integer scaling, which we're not going to get into in this video, but it's one of the reasons why I prefer shaders, which we'll explore in a second. Let's take a look at an overlay that will work a little bit better for this configuration. We're going to go back into our presets and we're going to open this Mega Drive animated border. And this one's pretty awesome. You can see not only does the overlay have a Sega Genesis theme, but watch what happens as I push the buttons on my DualShock controller. They actually animate on the overlay itself while I'm playing the game. That is pretty sweet. 
So when it comes to overlays, I don't really use them that often anymore. When I did, there was this great overlays pack that you could get on the RetroArch forums made by a user called Orion's Angel. If you're interested in exploring some of the options that are out there as far as overlays, check out this post and I'll put it in the description below. If you're enjoying this content so far, why not consider giving a like? It might even save a code man. Now we've come to one of my favorite things about RetroArch, shaders. What is a shader? Well, keep in mind that games of the past were not designed for the high resolution displays that we have today. That's why they look very pixelated on an HD TV or computer monitor. So shaders are designed to improve these old visuals, either by improving the rendering of the graphics or replicating the look of older TVs. Let's set it up and I'll show you what I mean. I recommend you use the Vulkan video driver if you plan on making use of shaders. Overall, this driver gives better performance in a number of cores. In order to change the driver, we go into settings, drivers, and then the video setting. To load and view shaders, we want to have a game running, and with a game running, we enter the quick menu. And then go down to shaders, and I like to have these two settings enabled video shaders on, obviously, and then also remember last used shader directory. Now we want to go down to load, and we can start scrolling through shaders. If you're still on the GL driver, you want to go into GLSL folder. If you switched over to Vulkan, we're going to go into the slang folder. Let's uh, load a shader by going down to the presets folder. And here's a pretty popular one. We're going to scroll down and we're going to select Scale FXAA. And let's see what that looks like. As you can see, it's made the graphics a lot less pixelated and a lot more smooth. You can use the toggle shader hotkey, which by default is comma on the keyboard, and it will turn the shader off and on just so you can see the difference real time. Now let me load up another popular shader in a favorite of mine, and I'll show you how you can use overlays and shaders at the same time. Now as cool as shaders and overlays are, to get the full retro experience as far as I'm concerned, you need to be using Mega Bezels! Mega Bezel is a complex set of shaders created by developer hyperspace madness. These shaders provide a foundation that a number of artists and other developers have built upon to create a retro experience that is nothing short of superb. I mean, what they have done is truly phenomenal. We're about to find out why. Let's take a look. We can download the Mega Bezel shader pack from directly inside RetroArch by going to Online Updater and then Update Shaders. It'll either say slang if you're on the Vulkan video driver or GL if you're on the GL video driver. We also need to download two additional shader packs from the web and I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce these two developers names and in all honesty I'm probably not even worthy to. We're not worthy! As always the links will be in the description. But here on this page we're going to download this zip and then we're going to come over to this other developers page. We're going to click on code and we're going to download this zip. Now we want to go into our RetroArch directory and we're going to navigate to the shaders folder and we just want to make sure that in our slang or GL folder, depending on our video driver, we're on Vulkan so we're going to go into slang and then into bezels and we just want to make sure that the mega bezel folder is there. Next we want to navigate back out to the main shaders folder and you're going to want to create this folder exactly as it's named here mega underscore bezel underscore community and this is where we're going to unpack the two shader zips that we downloaded. So you can open the first zip folder drag and drop it into the Mega Bezel community folder we just created. Mine are already there so I'm not gonna actually do it in this video. And then you can do 
The same with the second zip folder. To use the mega bezel shaders, there's a few settings in RetroArch we need to confirm. So let me show you what those are. First, we go to settings, user interface. You wanna make sure that show advanced settings is turned on. Next, we wanna to go to settings video. We're gonna to go to scaling. We want the aspect ratio to be full. Integer scaling off. Next, we go to output. You want video rotation normal. And then back out to the main settings and core. And here we wanna make sure that allow rotation is off. With all those settings confirmed, let's check out some of these shaders. Once again, we're gonna be in game and then we're gonna open the quick menu. From there, we'll go to shaders, load. We'll hop into the mega bezel community folder and I'll load up some of these shaders. As you can see, there's bezels and shaders for just about every system you can think of, which is just amazing. But I just wanna load up a plain Jane TV shader. This is amazing. Notice the curvature on the glass and also the real-time reflection and glow on the side of the panel. I'm back in the Mega Bezel Community folder because I want to load up another shader that I absolutely love. This is my favorite. It really gets my retro and nostalgia juices flowing. This reminds me so much of the TV I had in my room when I was a kid and what it was like playing the old Nintendo on that screen at night. This is just truly amazing. And one thing I like to do to make it a little more authentic, you can go back into the shader settings and go down to shader parameters and there's all kinds of settings here you can change. But the one I like to change is viewport zoom. And I like to zoom in on the screen because as a kid, I always sat super close to the screen. I know, bad for your eyes, as my mom always said. And then I like to center the Y axis just so it's right in the middle and a little bit more viewable on my flat panel display. If you're tired of seeing game over screens like this one, make sure you check out our RetroArch tutorial on hotkeys so you can become a master of the game. One more important note about shaders. When you find one you like and you don't want to have to load it up every time you open RetroArch, make sure you save it by going into the save menu. You can save it as a global preset so that shader will apply to every system and every game that you have in RetroArch, or you can save it as a core preset and it will only apply to games that you play on that system or core. And stay tuned for a future tutorial on configuration files. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. I hope this video has given you a little more know-how on some of the amazing things you can do in RetroArch. A common question I get asked is, what is the best shader out there? The best way to answer that question is to just play around with them. Try different things, see what suits you, and most important, have fun. We'll be back soon with another RetroArch how-to video, and I do hope you can join us. Until then, happy gaming, my friends.